All righty. I think we are good. Welcome, Robert. It's very sad. This will be our last one for a while. So camp starts, I know, next week. And yep. we're not going to be doing busy. these. Yep, then we're busy. Um, hopefully, um, we'll start something like this up again in the fall for everybody. Um, but this will be our last one, um, at least until probably September. Um, so hopefully, everyone enjoys. And Robert, take it away. All right, guys. I, how is everyone today? I'm happy that you are uh, joining us. Um, it is going to be a good one. I am going to talk today a little bit about one of my favorite creatures in the world, which I seem to have a lot of those things. It's, it's tough. Um, it's like being a grown up, being an adult. You have more than one kid. You're not supposed to say which one is your favorite. Um, and, and I don't say that either of mine are my favorite because neither are, uh, I love them both, but it's the same, but it just goes on with, with so many other things. I like to say a lot of animals or a lot of, uh, insects or whatever are my favorites, but it's kind of the same thing. Um, it, it's hard to pinpoint a, a number one favorite because they all are so neat. They all offer so much, uh, to the world. Uh, they give us so much to look at and they're just all so amazing and, uh, interesting. And today will be no exception. Today we are going to talk about one of the coolest bugs that there is. Have you guys been outside today? Uh, have you been outside and heard any noise? More importantly, have you heard anything making a ruckus outside? Uh, maybe for the past couple weeks, you might have heard something. Uh, any idea what that could be? I mean, there's a lot of things that it could be, but the one thing in particular so that I'm talking about today is the cicada. That's right, the cicada, super cool, mysterious, misunderstood creature. Uh, they are such neat looking animals. Um, they are quite fantastic. Uh, and let's get on with having a look at them. Yes, cicadas are really cool. Oh, where'd you go? There you go, all right. Now cicadas are really neat. They are easily one of my favorite insects, one of my favorite bugs, um, period, uh, creatures. Um, they, nothing says summer quite like the cicada does. That's when we, we see and hear them. I have uh, wonderful memories of being a kid. Um, we had two just fantastic trees in the, the house that I grew up at in, the, in, in their backyard. We had one um, maple tree and one tall pine tree. And the pine tree was just like a ladder. I could climb right up the center of it. And the whole way up the trunk in the summer, it was just covered with cicada shells. And, and it was always uh, special if I got to find a live cicada. And they, their song, while it may be annoying to some, I think their song is just, just amazing. I love it. So here we are, cicadas. This is an adult cicada. This is a way that we very rarely get to see them. It's like this. Usually we, if we see them, uh, we find their shells or um, we find them as um, when they're dead or walking. And when they're dead or walking, their wings are pushed back against their body. Uh, we'll see a couple pictures of that as we go on. But uh, cicadas, they're an insect, right? How do we know this? Hmm, let's see, uh, legs. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, six legs. Uh, it has three sets of two there. So that tells me that it's an insect. Um, I see a head right up here. I see a thorax right about there. Remember the head is where the eyes and brain and sometimes the brain, sometimes with insects, the brains can be in other spots or midway. But you know, there's their head, there's their thorax. That's their body where their legs and wings are attached. And there's its abdomen. Now I'll tell you something about this one is different. See that shape there? See the way its abdomen comes to a point? That's because this cicada happened to be a female. 
And this point here is its egg laying apparatus. Um, it's got two sets of wings, so four wings total. Tells me it's an insect. Um, cicada is a true bug. When it closes its wings, they kind of fold back on each other. Um, most cicadas average to be about an inch or so. Uh, they don't get very big. Uh, they can be pretty chunky. They're about the size of the tip of a, a grown up's thumb. It's about what they get to be. A little bit bigger than that, I guess. But they get to be about an inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches at best, if you are lucky and find a big one. Uh, They're typically characterized by this greenish coloration. Um, with some darker brown or black patterns. Uh, this is somewhat typical of the ones that we see here in Pennsylvania. However, they can be big. This guy right here is known as an empress cicada. Uh, they are from uh, the South Pacific and they grow to be about three to four inches long and their wings can spread out to about eight inches. That is one big bug. Uh, cicadas, they are found worldwide, all over the world. They like to live in temperate to tropical regions. So that means we pretty much live in a temperate region where we have a equal winter, summer type thing and then further south where it gets to be more subtropical and tropical. There are over 3,000 species of cicadas. That's a lot. Uh, they are harmless to humans. Uh, they won't hurt us. Uh, they can bite. One thing that uh, is often um, believed is that adult cicadas do not eat. Uh, that's not true. Adult cicadas do have a, a, a straw-like mouth that you can find on the bottom of their body. We'll see a picture of that shortly. They have a straw like uh, feeding tube that they eat from, and they will suck juices out of uh, leaves and branches. Uh, they don't generally cause harm to trees at all, though. Um, but there can be from time to time, and I found this out once, that they might mistake you for uh, a tree branch or limb. I had one poke my leg one time, and it didn't hurt. It was just kind of surprising. Um, but they typically will not do that. They are harmful humans. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, cicada life cycle here. Um, so the female cicada, the mother, she will lay up to 600 eggs in a, on a, a tree branch. Uh, she will make a small incision in the bark of a tree, lay her eggs there. Uh, when the eggs hatch, and this is a little bit misleading because this picture here, that guy looks an awful lot like a flea, doesn't he? It's a lot like a flea, but it's not. Anyway, they're young when they hatch. Uh, the babies will fall to the ground. And from there, they will burrow into the ground um, around trees. And they will use their mouth parts to drink tree sap. They will find fluids and places where they can drink tree sap uh, from the roots of the tree underground. And they typically do not harm the tree at all. Um, we have so many of them around, uh, they are so prolific that if they were any kind of threat, we would see trees dying from them uh, all over. Uh, they do not damage our trees, they are not pests, um, they are very interesting to find. So they spend a lot of time underground. Um, most cicadas, typically a cicada in its larval form will live a year to five years underground. Uh, the species that we see the most of are called the dog day cicada. Uh, they're big and they're green. I'll show you a picture of those in a minute. But uh, they live underground for about a year to five years. Um, there are some cicadas that we'll talk about today too that can live as long as 13 to 17 years underground. Imagine that. Imagine being born and then spending all your time underneath a tree in the ground until you're a teenager. Oh, what a life. Um, but they live under there. Uh, when they're ready, when they get big enough and they're ready to uh, become an adult, they dig a little tunnel um, out of the ground. A lot of times in the summer, you can walk around the tree and see all these little round holes in the ground. 
around it, and that is where a cicada nymph has come up. Uh, the nymph then sheds its exoskeleton. That's the shell that surrounds it. A uh, crack will form in the back of it. Let's have a look at that. Oh, here we go. Here's a nymph. This is a way that we very rarely will find them. Um, I'll tell you the best time to look for them is at night, in the evening and or late at night in the early morning hours. They come out when it's dark. Um, and they'll come out just like this. You can see there, they look like an interesting little bug covered in dirt. It's got its claws that it uses for digging. It'll come out and what it's going to do is it is going to look for a spot to, to, to climb. Um, you look real careful around trees in, in late at night, early, early, early morning before the sun is up. Um, you might find some of these guys climbing around there. Uh, we used to have a tree in a backyard at our house that um, late at night in late July and August, you could just find dozens of them like this hanging. And what they do is they hang upside down and, and a slit will form in the back of its uh, exoskeleton and slowly a cicada will pop out and it'll hang upside down for a little while. And what it's doing while it's hanging there is all this skin underneath all of its body is just um, forming. So the wings, when it comes out, because if we go backwards and we have a look at that, you don't see any wings, do you? But right here, there's this little flap and that's where its wings are. Its wings are all folded up real neat like a piece of origami in this little part right there. So when it comes out, its wings are still folded. So its wings have to unfold um, real carefully. Um, they'll come out, they'll unfold and um, carefully uh, pop open and then it hangs. It hangs there and its wings will unfold, its shell, its exoskeleton, the outer part of its body is still very, very soft. And its wings are still very, very delicate. They're like, they're like wet paper at this point. They need to dry. They need to harden um, and dry up. That way it can be ready to uh, become an adult. Here we see one. They look quite different. Um, they look quite different from what we're used to seeing, um, don't they? Uh, it's got these green, green, almost white wings. Um, its shell is, is very, very um, light colored. But as it gets dry and as it, as it hardens, it will change its color up just a bit. Oops. Now here's what we're used to finding. We find a lot of these under our trees and on our trees. When I was a kid, I used to find so many of them. I'd line them up and make an army of them. Um, I love these things. I would cherish finding them in the summertime. I would collect them. Um, and I'd have them lined up all on our porch and on our steps. And, uh, I used to drive my parents nuts. This, to me, uh, was one of the things that summer was all about, was getting to find stuff like this. Now, this is an empty exoskeleton. Um, it's pretty much uh, what the creature lives in most of its life because once they become an adult, they only have summertime in this form. So here we have a dog day cicada. And look at those colors. Oh my goodness, look at those green. You ever seen a more beautiful green than that? That green is so, so neat. So that is an adult. That's after its wings are all set. Notice it doesn't have those light colors anymore its wings are dry its exoskeleton is strong and it's ready to move on here we have another beautiful beautiful cicada there look at those faces those eyes everything about them is so neat if you find one you can carefully pick that up either by coaxing it onto your hand or if you grab it gently just by the sides where the wings are right about here, just with a finger and thumb, and just lift it real gently. You can pick them up and let them climb on you. No, they don't hurt you at all, uh, and they're more likely to fly away. 
if you pick up a boy, he'll make a noise when you do it. And this that we're looking at right here, here's a boy. This is how I know. Remember that first picture? The female had kind of a pointy spot right there on her abdomen. His is more of like a blunt, just a little round knob there. But he's got these things here. You see those things that kind of look like scales there on the bottom of his belly? Those are the things that make that crazy loud sound. So when you hear a cicada singing, he's vibrating those uh, scales really, really, really fast. And that is um, his summertime song. So what he's doing when he does that, he's singing because he's trying to find himself a girlfriend. He is looking for a mate and he'll sing that and the girls will be looking for it. And um, right here, hopefully this works. I hope you guys can hear this. I viewed it. I don't have uh, uh, speakers on my computer, but I did view it on my, uh, I screened it first on my phone. So let's see if we can get a, some sound for this. And it doesn't appear that there's any sound, huh? But watch right here. When it comes around, just watch where its abdomen is, its belly. See it shaking? See that? So that's what they do. They rattle their abdomen against those plates and that's what makes that sound. Oh, hold on just a second, let's see. Uh, I don't think it's gonna let me. I tried to join with sound and it's still. Yeah, okay, so anyway, but there you see it. When it gets around there again, have a look at that. There is its abdomen. It's gonna start vibrating again. See that? And there you go. That's how the males make their summertime song. They, they shake their abdomen against those. And there you go. Here we have a picture of a male. You can get a better look at the underside there of those plates that he vibrates. Right here, you see that right there? See where the cursor is pointing? There, that's its mouth. That's that straw-like appendage that it uses to suck juices out of uh, trees and stuff. Here we get a nice close-up look of its face. I, I think they're such cool looking animals. I mean, they look like something that's from an another world. It's so neat that we have them uh, here and that we can, and we can get to enjoy the, the beauty and otherworldliness of animals like that. Now talk about otherworldly, have a look at this one. Holy smoke, it looks like something out of the nightosphere, doesn't it? It looks like something that's just from someplace scary. It's all black and has those orange eyes and all those orange markings. Look at that fella. So what this one is, this is a periodic cicada. This is one of the cicadas that emerges from the ground only about every 13 to 17 years. Imagine that. Imagine living underground for 13 to 17 years and then coming out just for a few weeks to find, find a mate and, um, and make babies. That, that, is, that is nuts. Um, now these insects, they're really neat. They only live in certain places. They don't live all over. There's only certain places where this specific type of cicada has evolved. And um, what they do is they emerge from the ground in large numbers. Look at all that. I mean, they just come out and they just cover trees and they're everywhere. Um, when they, their shells fall or, and when they start to die, it could just look like dead leaves on the ground. There can be so many of them. There are some places where there are so many of these in trees that to be near them, it is deafening. It can damage your ears because they get singing so, so, so loud. Um, and they cover the trees. Look at that. Now, even though there can be so many of them, they are still not dangerous to us. They still are harmless to us and they're relatively harmful to plants. Um, when they get into big groups like this, the only time they might be dangerous is if they're on a small tree and they happen to weigh it down. They might break some branches or some leaves off of it. But when these guys come out of the ground, they emerge in the hundreds to thousands, even more. 
uh, they come all out at once. And their reasoning for this is they've evolved to do this to thwart any kind of predators that there might be after them. Um, things like wasps and spiders and mantises. Um, they do this, they come out of the ground in these huge, huge numbers. That way they can continue the success of their species. That way if some of them get eaten by birds or, or, or other insects, um, you know, they'll, they'll still survive just because there's so many sheer numbers of them. Um, they overwhelm predators just in their numbers, so they can still carry on their species. So that's an interesting adaptation that this species has uh, taken on. Now here's a real nice look at one. This is one from above, those golden wings with the orange highlights. Ah, I just think that's a stunning guy. Now I've only seen these a few times. I haven't seen these very often. Um, and I wasn't sure, I haven't lived in Pennsylvania long enough to know if we have these here. So if any of you have seen them, you can chime in. But what it looks like, by looking at this map here, uh, we do supposedly see some of Brood 10. Uh, Brood 10 uh, looks like it was here in 2004, and it's due to be here next year in 2021. So there's something to look forward to next summer. Hopefully we'll see some of these guys crawling up out of the ground. Um, really, really neat. Now look at this. This map here, it shows all the different broods there are. So what this means is that there's um, different groups. So brood one, it comes out one year. The next year you'll see brood two, followed by three. So every year there's a different brood of these guys that come out. And brood, it's just another way of saying a fancy grouping. So we see one of the biggest groupings, group 10. And hopefully we'll see it next year. We'll have to wait and see. And this brood X is the one that I've seen before too. I saw those in Washington, DC one summer when they were out. Ah, real, real quick, let's have a look at some other cicadas, not just like ones that we see here. Uh, this is a fresh cicada. Um, they're found, I believe, more in the south central uh, United States. Um, when I lived in Texas, we used to find these guys. Look at these different colors. Notice that it is a lighter, more olive green, and it has brown stripes that go along there. Uh, just another interesting looking insect, and those patterns on its back are really cool. Let's have a look at this one. Now, what do you suppose this one is called? Any idea? Any idea what kind he is? He is the superb green cicada, of course. I mean, look at that green. That green is amazing. That truly is a superb green cicada. Those gold markings on its back, really, really neat looking. How about this one? Whoa. This is another one that we used to see in Texas. And supposedly these guys go, they're, they're spread through the Southern United States, even up the East Coast as far as New Jersey. I've never seen one on the East Coast before, but these guys are really neat because they are smaller cicadas. These guys are tiny. They're, they're just barely the size of your fingertip. So they're like miniature itty bitty cicadas. They are really, really cool. This guy is called a hieroglyph cicada. Now, going back and looking at their patterns, why do you think they have these patterns and colorations anyway? Well, it's camouflage. Um, there are some cicadas that are mostly gray, and they can hide right against the bark of a tree. The same with these guys. These guys, they like to hide in, in trees or near the leafy sections, so they have a mix of green and brown to help them hide in the leaves and the branches and they can blend right in. That makes them harder to be found by birds and things like that. I know blue jays love them. Blue jays will eat them, some of the bigger birds. I, I, don't, I, I imagine that mockingbirds and uh, cat birds might go after them, but I know blue jays love them. Cats like them too for some reason. But so do these guys. This is a cicada killer wasp. And you can look at it, and if you know how big a cicada is, and then think about how big that wasp looks compared to it, you can tell that it's a big insect. Uh, these guys grow to be about two inches long and they are pretty scary looking. However, they are generally harmless to humans. So I know right now there's a lot of talk in the news and in papers and things like that about the, the killer hornets, the uh, um, murder hornets or whatever they're calling them and how dangerous they are. If you see one of these, this is not a murder hornet. 
Um, these guys are actually beneficial to us because their main diet is cicadas. Uh, that's what they look for. They help us keep the cicada populations. They help keep it in balance so that there aren't too many cicadas. Um, they may eat some spiders from time to time. Um, a lot of bigger uh, wasps like that do. I'm not certain that they do, but they help keep our insect populations in check. Um, they don't want anything to do with humans at all. Um, I've seen these things uh, my whole life. We used to ride bikes on a dirt plane and uh, these, they live in the ground. They make these real interesting burrows with these kind of volcano looking uh, piles of dirt that, that come up from the ground that they dig. We used to ride our bikes over them, play around them, and we never once, I've never heard once of a person being stung by one of these. Um, they have one goal in mind, and that's just finding cicadas uh, to eat and give to their young. Um, they usually will not sting unless stepped on or grabbed. So as long as you're not doing either of those two, they will leave you alone. Uh, the males, if you get buzzed by one or if one flies up at you, it's probably a male but the males do not sting. They do not have a stinger. Only female insects that sting uh, have stingers because that's also how they lay their eggs, is through that stinger. It's also an ovipositor. Uh, males act tough, but they're not. Uh, they're just trying to scare you off and they're a little territorial. Uh, but the females, like I said, if you see one of these, leave it alone. Don't freak out, don't worry about it. It's not a murder hornet or anything like that. They are not gonna hurt you. Um, just let them be and let them do their job in the wild. Cicadas, super cool, super neat looking, wonderful insects. I hear one singing outside right now. I tried to find some this morning. I hope to have a live one to show you guys. I hope to even have found a shell to show you, but for some reason I couldn't even find that this morning. I looked at home before coming in and I walked around outside a little bit here. I don't know where they're all hiding. They're a little late this year, but I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Cicadas are really neat, wonderful creatures. I love finding them. Uh, um, get outside, go listen for one. Um, one of my favorite things to do is to sit outside on my deck and try and nap and just listen to them and drift off somewhere else while there's a dozen or so of them singing. Uh, I think it sounds neat, meditative even. Um, but go find one. Go see if you can find one climbing a tree. Tell I said hi. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Robert, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, as I said, this will be our last one of these um, for now, um, but check back in September. Hopefully, we'll start them up again. Um, and we do have a, um, an animal event coming up on Tuesday, the 28th at 5 o'clock. Um, you can find the information on our website, um, an opportunity to, to see some of the other animals that Robert has been showing us through these, um, through these programs um, that live with us um, here at Audubon. Um, so hopefully you'll join us for that. Um, thank you all very much. And we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Enjoy the rest of your summer, guys.